Let's face it, we've all had those moments of panic when the month outlasts the money. But have we ever stopped to ask why? Why do so many of us more often than not find ourselves in the grip of financial woes? This question, my friends, is not just about dollars and cents. It's about understanding the deep-seated psychological and societal factors that influence our financial behaviors. It's about lifting the lid on the hidden barriers that prevent us from achieving financial freedom. Now you might be thinking, isn't it just about earning more or spending less? Well, if it were that simple, wouldn't we all be rolling in dough? The reality, however, is far more complex. To truly grasp the enigma of empty wallets, we need to delve deeper. We need to explore the intricate maze of our financial mindsets, our spending habits, our emotional triggers, and our inherited beliefs about money. We need to confront the often uncomfortable truth about why we make the financial decisions we do. So, we're going to embark on a journey, a countdown of sorts. Over the next few minutes, we'll be dissecting the top 10 reasons why most people are broke. We'll be examining the psychological barriers to saving and investing, the impulse control issues that lead to excessive spending, the emotional spending habits we use as coping mechanisms, and so much more. Each reason will be a stepping stone on our path to understanding, a piece of the puzzle that will help us unravel the mystery of why so many of us struggle financially. But remember, this isn't just about identifying the problem. It's about acknowledging it, understanding it, and ultimately, overcoming it. It's about equipping ourselves with the knowledge and tools we need to break free from the chains of financial struggle and step into a life of financial abundance. Now, let's dive into the deep end and start unraveling this mystery. At number 10 and 9, we have fear of failure or loss and impulse control issues. Quite the dynamic duo, wouldn't you agree? Now, let's talk about fear. Fear is like that pesky neighbor who always shows up uninvited. It's a potent emotion that can hold us back in many areas of life. And finance is no exception. Many people are so afraid of losing money that they never take the leap to invest. They picture themselves as Icarus flying too close to the sun and their waxen wings of investments melting away. But here's the thing. With proper research, risk management and a dash of courage, you can navigate the financial skies without singeing your feathers. On the other hand, we have impulse control issues. Imagine you're in a candy store, and you're told you can have anything you want. Sounds like a dream, right? But it's a nightmare for your wallet if you can't control your sweet tooth. This is what happens when we walk into a store or scroll through an online shopping site. We see something shiny, our brain goes, ooh, pretty. And before we know it, we're typing in our card details faster than a cat chasing a laser pointer. And let's not forget the sales. Oh, the sales. They lure us in with their neon signs and slashed prices, promising happiness in exchange for a few dollars. But often, these impulse purchases end up in the back of our closets, forgotten and gathering dust. So how do we combat these issues? Well, it's not about becoming a penny-pinching hermit or a stock market daredevil. It's about balance. It's about understanding that fear can be a guide, not a jailer and that impulse purchases are like junk food, fine in moderation but detrimental in excess. It's about taking the reins of your financial life and steering it in the direction you want, rather than letting it be swept away in the currents of fear and impulse. So fear and impulse, they sure do know how to empty a wallet, don't they? Moving right along to number eight and seven, we come across emotional spending and status symbol syndrome. Money can't buy happiness, but it seems we still try. Let's begin with emotional spending. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? We feel a bit down, a bit blue. And suddenly a pair of shoes or a shiny new gadget seems like the perfect pick-me-up. Retail therapy, they call it. But when the rush of the purchase fades, we're often left with the same hollow feeling and a lighter wallet. And then there's the pressure to keep up with the proverbial Joneses. We've all heard stories about the guy who buys a flashy sports car he can't afford, or the woman who goes into debt to wear designer labels. It's a race to showcase our success, to prove that we're doing well. The sad irony? Often these displays of wealth are simply masking a less glamorous financial reality. Just imagine for a moment, Mr. Jones. He's got a gleaming new watch, a luxury car in the driveway, 
and a house that could grace the cover of a magazine. But behind the scenes, Mr. Jones is juggling credit card bills and sweating over mortgage payments. All that glitters is not gold, my friends. And let's not forget the social media effect. With everyone's best life on display, it's easy to feel like you're falling behind. But remember, what you're seeing is often a carefully curated illusion. It's like comparing your behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. Here's a thought to ponder over. Instead of spending on things we don't need to impress people we don't even like, what if we invested that money instead? What if we built real wealth instead of just the appearance of it? So the next time you're tempted to splurge on something you don't need or can't afford, take a moment, ask yourself, are you buying it because you genuinely want it? Or because you're trying to fill an emotional void or keep up appearances? So emotions and status symbols, a costly pair indeed. Next up, at number six and five, we have procrastination and unrealistic expectations. Ah, the dreamers and the dawdlers. You know, it's a funny thing about procrastination. It's like that old saying, why do today what you can put off until tomorrow? But while it's all well and good to delay doing the dishes or mowing the lawn, when it comes to your finances, procrastination can be a real wallet wrecker. Imagine you're standing at the foot of a mountain called financial responsibility. Each day, you tell yourself you'll start the climb tomorrow. But days turn into weeks, weeks into months, and before you know it, you're facing an Everest of unpaid bills, neglected savings, and unchecked spending. No one wants to be a financial mountaineer, but by putting off dealing with money matters, you're essentially setting yourself up for a precarious ascent. Now, let's talk about unrealistic expectations. Picture this. You're lounging on a yacht in the Mediterranean, sipping on a cocktail with a cool million in your bank account. Sounds dreamy, right? But if you're earning the average wage and spending like there's no tomorrow, this dream can quickly become a nightmare. It's not wrong to have big dreams, but when it comes to finances, it's essential to keep your feet on the ground. Expecting to become a millionaire overnight without a solid plan or consistent effort is like expecting to win the lottery without buying a ticket. It's not just unlikely, it's downright unrealistic. Unrealistic expectations can lead to risky financial behaviors, like investing in dodgy schemes or spending beyond your means in the hope that someday, somehow, you'll strike it rich. But wealth isn't built on hopes and dreams. It's built on disciplined saving, smart investing, and realistic goal setting. So there you have it, folks. Procrastination and unrealistic expectations. Two silent saboteurs of financial health. Whether you're a dreamer, a dawdler, or both, it's time to wake up, lace up those boots, and start climbing that mountain of financial responsibility. Procrastination and high hopes, when it comes to money, they're not the best companions. And at number four and three, we have inherited negative beliefs about money and mental health. We're truly getting to the crux of it now. We're all products of our upbringing and cultural influences. These factors often shape our beliefs about money and unfortunately not always in a positive way. For instance, if you were raised in a household where money was always a source of stress, you might have internalized the belief that money equates to worry and conflict. This can lead to subconscious self-sabotage when it comes to wealth accumulation. You might find yourself avoiding financial responsibility or even unconsciously spending what you earn to avoid the perceived stress of having money. Similarly, cultural influences can also play a significant role. If you come from a background where wealth is seen as a sign of greed or moral corruption, you might feel guilty about pursuing financial success. This could lead to a pattern of self-sabotage where you unconsciously hinder your own financial growth. Now let's move on to another often overlooked aspect, mental health. Conditions such as depression and anxiety can significantly impact financial decision-making. For example, someone battling depression might struggle with motivation to manage their finances or make sound financial decisions. Anxiety, on the other hand, might lead to excessive worry about financial security, leading to either reckless spending or an unhealthy obsession with saving. Moreover, impulse control disorders can lead to compulsive spending, while conditions like ADHD can make it difficult to maintain financial discipline. It's important to remember that these are not character flaws, 
but health issues that can and should be addressed. Inherited beliefs and mental health can really make or break your bank account. It's crucial to recognize and challenge any negative beliefs about money you may have inherited and seek help if mental health issues are affecting your financial behavior. Remember, financial wellness is a journey, and like any journey, it's easier when you're not carrying unnecessary baggage. And now we're revealing the top two culprits, lack of financial education and ignorance, the big guns, so to speak. Despite the importance of money management in our daily lives, many of us never receive a formal financial education. This lack of knowledge can lead to poor decision-making and a lifetime of financial struggle. Unfortunately, many schools do not provide comprehensive financial education, leaving students unprepared for the financial responsibilities of adulthood. Similarly, financial education at home is often lacking. Without proper guidance, young people can develop poor money habits that follow them into adulthood. This lack of education can result in not knowing how to budget, save, or invest, leading to a cycle of financial instability. And then we have ignorance. This is not about intelligence, but rather a lack of awareness about financial products, investment options, and the importance of saving and investing. Many people fall into the trap of high interest loans or risky investments simply because they don't fully understand what they're getting into. Some might not even realize the power of compound interest and how saving and investing early can lead to significant wealth accumulation over time. Ignorance, in this case, is definitely not bliss. It's essential for everyone to take the initiative to educate themselves about personal finance. There is a wealth of resources available online, including blogs, podcasts, and online courses. Financial literacy is the key to breaking the cycle of financial struggle and achieving financial freedom. So there you have it, folks. Lack of education and ignorance, the two biggest traps of financial failure. Having journeyed through the labyrinth of financial failure, we've unmasked its hidden traps. From the enigma of empty wallets, the fear factor, emotional spending, procrastination, inherited beliefs, mental health, to lack of financial education and ignorance, we've seen it all. But remember, each of these traps can be overcome with self-awareness and education. You can break free. You can embark on a journey towards financial freedom. Understanding your financial habits, controlling your impulses, being realistic about your expectations, challenging your inherited beliefs, prioritizing your mental health, and most importantly, educating yourself about personal finance. All these steps can lead you towards financial freedom. It's a journey, not a destination, and it's a journey worth embarking on. Remember, the power to change your financial future lies in your hands. You can choose to stay trapped in this labyrinth of financial failure, or you can choose to break free. With the right knowledge and mindset, you can overcome these traps and build a secure financial future. So let's break free from these traps and embrace financial freedom. Stay tuned to our channel for more insightful videos on personal finance. Together, let's make financial freedom a reality.